for secrecy, but Division Zero takes it to a whole new level. They put us on a plane with blacked out windows, then blindfolded us for the ride to the research facility. Shad let them put the blindfold on as a favor to me. Although, to tell the truth, I almost let them try to force one on them just to see what would happen. The conference room they took us to looked like every other army office I'd ever seen. The only indications that this was a Division Zero facility were the steel shutters over the windows and the lab coats instead of uniforms everywhere. Everything was perfectly normal until the alarms went off and then the screaming started. By the time we got into our go bags and geared up, the facility was locked down and the body count was rising. Looks like this briefing just became hands on. And welcome back to turn six of Fireteam Zero by Emergent Games. If you remember, our plan for the uh, last turn didn't work out quite as I'd hoped. I was hoping more of these guys would end up in here. Uh, I miscalculated that. So far, we have. We've revealed one, two, three, four, five areas. Uh, we've searched in five areas and we have found no objectives thus far, which is not great. We have one twist card, which is already revealed. We will get another one revealed on this turn. So let's get back to it straight away. First thing, we will move the first player token. That will move to Dom. Uh, tactical response phase. Now, uh, what we can do now, if we remember, we picked up this card last turn, which actually does get removed on the tactics phase. So Don now is allowed to uh, utilize his his focus ability once more. Let's discard that. So tactical response. I did want to do this one here, but clearly that is not going to work for us now because there are only uh, one, there is only one monster in our sector um, I think maybe this one might work for us I think each hero may immediately move two spaces starting with the player to your left let's just have a quick look at what that means for us uh, the player to Maxine's left Oh, sorry, not Maxine, sorry, Abe, because we're Abe now. The, that's why we've got Maxine <laughs> on there, she's confusing me. Um, yeah, I had, the, I had the player card turned the wrong way around because I'm so used to playing Maxine. Uh, starting the player on our left, that would mean Frank could basically ignore difficult terrain. Um, so he could move, just trying to get us into a position where one, one, two, I'm trying to get into the position where we're not going to take any damage next turn or we're not going to be in range, but these guys will all be in here. Let's try and do that. So Frank essentially will be able to move. Yeah, I'm going to play that card. So Frank, ignoring difficult terrain because of the way the card's written, he's actually going to go one, two. Uh, yeah, he's going to go to there. Is that the best way of doing it? Yeah. Frank has moved to there, so he will take that guy with him. Um, Don will move into here. And Abe will go one, because he's allowed to do this action as well. He'll go one, two, into here. I think that secures us all those points. Yeah, let's do that. So, we're going to say we've done that, so we're going to discard this card. So, drawing cards. Um, Don draws two cards. He's going to draw, finally, some grenades and a brawl. So, Don gets a high X. He gets a concussive, uh, concussive device, which is basically a, a damage and a brawl attack. So, we'll put the, the brawl ones at the bottom there. We'll put the, uh, we'll put the grenade at the top. Um, Abe can't draw any cards because he played a tactical response. So that brings us to Frank, who is already on five cards. One, two, three, four, five. So he cannot draw any cards either. So that takes us into the first turn. And it's going to be Don first. The first thing Don's going to do... is turn this over for a free action. 
I've just realised I just sh shouldn't have done that. I should have put him there and him there. Okay, well, it's done now. We'd been better off if uh, Frank had stayed here, but anyway. So, we're going to do that, and we're going to draw the recon card. Harbinger Flock. A foul wind blows over you, carrying with it the stench of decay. The sound of wings rises to a deafening roar and the light dims as hundreds of small shadows pass over you. When the light returns, you find yourself surrounded by dead crows. If the lucky coin is face up, flip it face down. I'll f That is flipping terrible, because we've already had the lucky coin one. If it was face down, put face up. They've come in the wrong way. So now the lucky coin goes face down. Any times one of our heroes gets knocked down now, that is game over. Okay, so we continue with Don's turn. Uh, yeah, we can still actually work out the way I wanted to do it in the first place, but I didn't think it through. So Don's now going to move, for his uh, movement, he's going to move into there. He gets another free search, so that's what he's going to do. He's going to search here. Let's see what we get this time. And we are in high ground. Churning ooze. Something sharp cuts your finger as you flip the clasp on the sample case. Inside are two glass vials. One is filled with writhing worms in a thick fluid, their fanged mouths scraping at the inside of the glass. The other has been reduced to jagged fragments. You look at the end of your finger in horror. Keep this card as a free action at the beginning of each of your turns. You must attack an ally in your location if possible. Place an intel token on the objective. Okay, so we've got retrieve the uh, retrieve the blood sample. That objective is done. Uh, it just means that now we have to be careful of our positioning. Now let's do this first. So retrieve the blood sample is there. There we go. So we've done that. Let's put that there. No, okay, let's put that there. Probably not going to stand up on there. So we'll just flip that over to say that one's done and we've got a uh, yeah it's not going to work so I've turned the um, <laughs> turn the the stand too vertical so that one's done what it also means is I hope it means yes we can flip let's just see if we can see that there yeah we can flip the lucky coin face up excellent so let's do that the lucky coin is face up now. Okay, apologies for that. I've just uh, sorted out the stand so it's uh, not uh, sitting so vertical. So, yep, we've done retrieve the blood sample. The objective completed token is on there and we flipped the lucky coin face up. Now, as I said, just have to remember that now Don is going to try and attack anybody in his location at the start of his turn. So we have to remember that. So it's now, um, that's the end of Don's turn. He's moved into there. He can't move back. This is difficult terrain. So he'll stay where he is. We don't have anything to assist with that. No. Let's just double check. Make sure we've got nothing for difficult terrain. Would it be handy if we could actually move Don out of there? Um, no. No, no, we don't. Okay, no problem. So Don's going to stay there. Um, now it comes to Abe's turn. Abe, yeah, see now we cannot leave us. Well, we could leave ourselves in here. But one, two, three, one, two. My concern is that these guys are all going to end up in here. Um, but Don is going to be the last player next time. It's just going to slow us down because if we go into it here, then we can move straight out. Okay, we're going to risk it. We're going to risk it. Um, so Frank is going to move into here. He is not going to take those guys with him. So that's difficult terrain. He's going to move into there and he's going to stay on overwatch or is he he's got hardly any bullets that's the problem we don't have many bullets for frank so he's we don't have any apart from the one we want to use well yeah we have one which is not really going to work out for us uh, 
actually that would work because we have something play when an ally. Abe has this one play when an ally performs an attack to be able to let him keep that card instead of discarding it. So we could actually play this one for the six bullets. And yeah, let's do that. Okay, too much procrastinating. Let's get on with it. So Frank is going to go there and he's going to do nothing because he's got no range. So, oh, yes, actually, no, no, something. I was thinking about using grenades, but it's just. Too much of a problem. One, two, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, so I'm just <laughs> too busy trying to think of too many things. Let's just get on with the game. Um, so Frank's gone to there. He's going to do nothing else. He will wait. Abe will stay here, and he will do nothing because if we move out, it's going to cost us two to move back in. That's it. Done and dusted. I'm not doing anything else on the turn. Uh, okay, so. Let's go to the monster phase. Monster phase, first thing we do, move the threat track one space forward, which means we are going to, of course, draw a threat card. And we have evasive. The attack strength of brawl and bomb attacks against minions is reduced by one. Okay, what that basically means is that if we're going to roll three dice against a creature while we're doing a bomb or a brawl, we now only roll two. Likewise, if we're going to roll four, we're only going to roll three. So that is not great. Okay, let's see, uh, see what happens. Okay, monster movement. Let's get these bait bags moving. We'll go for this one first. So he's going to move one. Then he's got an equal distance to travel to Abe or Frank, who is the first. Don was first, so the next person will be Abe. So he's gonna go into Abe. Okay, Abe's gonna take a shot at him as his focus. Uh, that's right, yeah, one, two, as his focus ability. Um, what is he gonna do? Is he do bullets and yeah, remember we lose. We are going to lose one dice. Uh, one dice. So Frank will assist. He's within range one of the monster. So play before an ally performs a bullet attack to increase their attack strength by two. So he's going to play that. Uh, Abe is going to play center mass, which gives him three bullets or three dice. So it's three dice plus two is five. But remember, we only roll four because of the, uh, the twist. So let's get over to the dice tray. So we're looking for four hits on four dice and we do get a reroll. Re uh, okay, we've got three hits there. We need one more hit. Oh man, no, we missed. Okay, that's not good. That's not good at all. This guy is still alive. Uh, <laughs> oh, this could go badly wrong. Um, yeah, Don can't do anything. So he will attack us. And he's going to attack us with a brawl of two. Oh, is there anything play before an ally performs an attack? Play before an ally performs, play before a minion activates. We can do that, but we're going to lose cards. Frank could use. No, he can't use that one. Can't use any of those. Play at the end of an ally's turn. Play before a minion activates. No. Um, okay, no. All right, we're in trouble. So, the bait bag is going to attack us with two dice and brawl attack. Four. Oh my god. Oh my god. Four damage. Abe is down. Yeah, we've only got three cards, which we discard, and we took four. Okay, Abe is down. That, of course, means the lucky coin flips face down. Oh, man. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's see how this pans out. This could be a very short game. So, let's move this one. One, two. 
doesn't move any further. That is excellent. <laughs> one, two, come on, one in six chance. Okay, no, it moves into, uh, can't go for Abe, because Abe is already down, so he'll go to Frank. Frank can actually take a shot at him, and I, oh man, I can't risk taking the shot, because I really need to keep. See, I was going to play this, and then Abe was going to use one of his cards, which allowed me to keep a discarded card, but obviously that has all gone out the window now. Um, and I really don't want to play this because I need to use this next turn or we're really going to be in trouble. Uh, the problem is, can I negate the damage? I've just got to negate the damage from this one. But if I take four again, I'm in real trouble. Um, is there anything, anything Don can do to help me? Um, no, play before and I play at the end of an ally's turn. You move to their location, play at the end of the night. I've got nothing. I think I'm going to have to take the hit. Because Frank can only do bullet attacks as his uh, focus ability. He can't do anything else. I have only got one bullet. And Okay, I'm going to... If I don't take the risk this time, then next time we are really going to be in the shit. So, okay, let's go to the dice tray for a uh, very tense moment here at the table. So, two dice, it's a brawl attack, three, <laughs> okay, three damage, that is bad, but we can live with it. So, one, two, three, I'm not sure how we're going to get out of this one, to be honest. Let's move the next ones. Um, one, two. You'll move one more. Three, one, two. You'll move one more. Uh, this guy is going to come obviously this way. One. Oh, which is the best way for him to come? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, of course. One, two. And he's going to move one more. Uh, no spawning, so that's where we are. At the end of this turn, not looking great. Abe is down, Frank is really in trouble. Uh, okay, let's see how it pans out in the next one. Okay, beginning of turn six. Um, I'm not sure if it'll all be over now, but let's see what happens. First thing we do, we'll move the uh, first player token that will go to Abe, even though he's not down. Uh, the lucky coin is flipped face down at the moment, there's nothing we can do about that. The next time somebody goes down, we are dead. Game over. Um, okay, so tactical response, yes, yes, yes. Been holding on to this and we've managed to retain it for about three turns. Frank is going to play this. Inflict a total of 12 damage to any combination of monsters in your sector, ignoring resistance. 12 damage, combination. So, ignoring resistance, these guys only have a, uh, we only need to get two to kill them. So we ignore the resistance. So, clearly this is what's gonna happen. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That was a lifesaver. They're dead. Ah, okay, okay. So, we move on to picking cards. Um, Abe's gonna pick five cards. One, two, three, four. He's only got four there at the moment. Let's stack these up here. And we'll do a shuffle of his deck. And we'll draw one more card. And it is Knuckle. Knuckle Duster. Okay, so that's what we've got for, uh, for Abe for the time being. Frank has no cards, nor can he draw any cards. So, there's nothing much we can do about that because he played a tactical response. Don does have a full set of cards. He's got five, so he doesn't draw either. Okay, let's see what we can do. It's Abe first. Abe clearly is gonna stand up. 
we've checked everything everything in here um, so we're gonna have definitely gonna have to make our way over to here best way to do that remember Don can't start his turn in the same space as one of our heroes um, that is a bit of a problem because now Don <laughs> has got both specialists with him okay hey let's start moving out one two Frank one Frank Better stay there, I think, until he can get some cards in hand. Actually, do you know what? We better hang fire here until at least Frank can get some cards. So Abe's going to move into the same location as uh, Frank and just stay there. Uh, so yeah, so basically Abe doesn't matter which way we do it. Let's say Abe moves into the same location as Frank. Frank stays where he is. Don is going to move out. This is uh, difficult terrain, so it's going to take him all his movement to move there. Um, has he got anything for difficult terrain? No, because it'd be handy that Don not having these guys, but anyway, we've got them. So I think that's pretty much all we can do. There's no point risking anything else at the moment. We've got these two points secure. Let's try and get some cards into Frank's hand next turn. Okay, so, monster phase. Let's move the threat track on one. We only have one monster on the board. There he is. So, he's going to move one. He's going to move two. Oh, <laughs> and he's not going to move any further. Uh, yeah, nearly forgot. Need to spawn the monsters. So, let's do that now. We've got five to spawn. First one. Six. Six is, is here. Okay. And two. Two is uh, here. And because he spawned adjacent to one of our, well, to our heroes, he moves into, uh, he moves into the location with us and who went first last time? Abe. So he'll actually go into there, unfortunately. So he's already in with us. Uh, seven. Seven is not secured because there's a creature in there. So that comes in there. It's all going wrong now. Uh, Twelve. Twelve is... Where is twelve? Twelve is over here. And finally... Four. Four is over here. Okay, well, not great. We've got a, a lot of creatures on us here, but anyway. Okay, that's the spawn phase done. That is the end of that turn. So thanks for watching. We've managed to get ourselves sort of out of trouble a little bit, well, more than a little bit, and let's hope that next turn we can try and get over. We need to start making our way over to here. I mean, now, We've already taken one, two, three, four, five. We've already taken seven recon cards. So it's seven areas. We've only got one, uh, one objective done at the moment. And we need to get to the find the traitor objective because we need to get this coin flipped the other way up. Because remember, next time one of us goes down, it's game over as it stands at the moment. Thanks for watching and tune in next time. Bye for now.